Hello, this video is about how to install Eclipse Luna for Java EE Enterprise Environment in Ubuntu 14.04. The outcomes will be to check if Java is installed, determine if you have a 32-bit operating system or a 64-bit operating system. You will need to know this in order to download the correct Eclipse Luna version. Download Eclipse Luna for Java EE verify the checksum, install Eclipse Luna, and set it up to work with the Eclipse icon, and then verify Eclipse Luna operation with a Java Hello World program. Requirements, Java JDK, Java Development Kit 1.7 or higher installed, 1.6 will not work with Luna, and also you're going to need the JDK if you want to do Java work, the Java JRE will not work for developing Java programs. And this demo uses Open Java, but Oracle Java can be used. Ubuntu 14.04 operating system with administrative privileges and an internet connection. Additional info is on the Eclipse homepage. Here's a link to Eclipse multi-user installs for if you run into permission problems. Here's more information on using Eclipse Luna on Ubuntu. And then finally, I get an error message when I use Eclipse. And I've had this error message for several months, but everything seems to work right. And this speaks to that error message. And if you want to research it further and see if you can hunt down the problem and fix the error message, you can go ahead and do that. And finally, disclaimer, while I've researched this material, I can't fully verify that will work with all combinations of hardware and software out. So I've included a disclaimer. If you wish, you can stop the video and read the disclaimer. Before you install Eclipse Luna, you need to get some information about your system. One of the things that you need to check out is which version of Java is installed. Eclipse Luna needs at least Java 7. In order to do that, we'll go to the command line, go to dash here, and do a search for terminal. If it's not popping up like it is on this screen, we'll just type in T-E-R and it will show up and then select it. Once the terminal is open, go for a Java space dash version. In right here it says the out open JDK runtime environment 1.7 so that's the minimum requirement for Eclipse Luna. Another thing if you're going to do Java development you're going to need the JDK instead of the JRE this just lets you know that the JRE is installed. And I really don't have a good way to check this, but I can see if the compiler, Java compiler, is on this computer by doing a JAVAC, Javac, and then again a dash version. And here it is, and this is the same version as up there, so more likely the JDK is installed, or the Java Development Kit. Now another thing that you're going to need to find out is if you have a 32-bit operating system or a 64-bit operating system. Eclipse Luna comes in two versions, 32-bit and 64-bit, and you may want to know which one to download. The easiest way to do this is dpkg space dash dash print dash architecture and right here it says AMD64, which tells you that it's a 64-bit operating system installed. If it said I386, then it would be a 32-bit operating system. Of course, if you don't want to do that from the command line, you can go over here to right-click, or in my case, I even left-click, and just get to about this computer. And that will pop some details about your computer. In this case, it says operating system type 64-bit. So I'll be downloading 64-bit Luna. Here I am at the Eclipse homepage, eclipse.org. And I'm going to click download because I want to download the Java development option. And right here it says Eclipse IDE for Java developers and Luna. And I want to make sure right here it says... I'm going to have L Linux checked. 
because I have a Linux computer, Ubuntu, and the one I'm going to download is 64-bit for Java EE developers. And the main reason I picked Java EE, not that I have uh, everything on my computer for Java EE, uh, basically if you get the Java EE from Oracle, then that will include the Glassfish server and some additional documentation. But I want to use Java EE because I, I want to do some web application work. And since I have a 64-bit computer and it's Ubuntu, I'm going to pick Linux 64-bit. Click on here. And then once I have this, I'll just simply click whatever mirror comes up here. One other thing I want to note is I'm going to come back here and get the SHA-1 sum and verify that the download is not corrupted. So let me just pick this right here and then this should open up and instead of opening the file I'm going to save the file click OK and then wait here till it's completely downloaded and then go back and pick up the uh, SHA-1 sum. After a few minutes the file will be downloaded so I'm going to go back to my previous page and you may or may not find that this is the same site here but I'm going to pick up the SHA-1 checksum and I'm going to copy it well make sure I get the complete one copy and now one thing that I need to do is open a terminal go to a dash type in terminal, get my terminal, go to the CD downloads directory, do an LS, see what's in there. And there's my Eclipse JEE file. What I'm going to do is do a SHA-1 sum, and then I'm going to pick the file name Eclipse, and this will give me the SHA-1 checksum for this file, but I'm going to take this and pipe it into grep, and grep is going to see if there's a match with what I copied, paste. Do an enter, and it might take a, a minute or two to do this, and because there is a match, you'll see that the match is in red. If I did this without a match, for example, I change this C to a A or something like that, nothing would come out. It would be like this. So there's a match, and so the file is good to go. Now that Eclipse is downloaded, the next step would be to install Eclipse. Do that. Let's open up a terminal. And I'm going to go to the downloads directory. do an ls and there's the Eclipse Java EE Luna file so to install Eclipse into the op directory I would go sudo tar xzvf then Eclipse the file name and then dash capital C so I want to change the directory where it's going to be installed and do an opt and that will install it into the op directory which is options and there's the verbose format where it lets you know what's going on so the next thing I'm going to do is create a desktop entry so that it will show up here on the menu on the left and to make that a little bit simpler, I'm going to go to CD, change the directory to CD, USR, share, applications, do an LS here, and you see this is where all the desktop entries are stored. And what I'm going to do is create a desktop entry for the Eclipse application. 
and I'm going to use the Vim text editor. You can use whichever text editor you wish. Get it, I believe, is the default editor for Ubuntu now. But I'm using Vim because basically get it. Sometimes the spaces don't line up correctly when you're viewing it on the video. And I'm going to call this Eclipse.Desktop. If you need to install Vim, it would be sudo and you want to use Vim, it would just simply sudo apt get install Vim. And then once I'm in the Vim editor, I would just hit I so that I can insert text. And just desktop entry name equal eclipse whoops let me go back up and make correct myself should be equal not dash then whatever language in this case is English for me name English equal in my case it's eclipse and this is dependent on your own language put in a comment integrated development environment type application. If you did not install your Eclipse in the op directory but installed it someplace else, this is where you would find the Eclipse file. In this case I installed in the op directory and it would be in the Eclipse folder in the op directory and then Eclipse is a file name. Then we've got the icon to show up. Icon.xpn. And I, I probably should have shown this to you before, but I'll show it to you after this. And make sure that when you do this, that especially with the exec icon and terminal, it is case sensitive. And if everything is spelled correctly here, especially with the exec and the icon and uh, the terminal and the display, this should work. In my case, I'm going to hit escape, colon, right quit. Now in order to start the first time, I'm going to have to go to the op directory, so I'm going to go CD opt do an ls and right there you see the eclipse folder cd eclipse and then do an ls and right here you'll see the eclipse application and the icon xpn as well as all the other files that go along with eclipse so in order to start i simply type in eclipse on the first start i'm sorry what I have to do is dot slash Eclipse. If I was not in the Eclipse directory, I wouldn't have to use that. That's just a safety feature here. And now it'll run. I'm going to click OK here. But one thing you'll notice right here, it gives an error message but I've been using Eclipse for uh, several months and let me pull this over here and it still keeps giving me this error message as far as the loopback configuration will retry after the state location is initialized and it seems to be working fine for me I tried to hunt this down on the internet so I'm not exactly sure where the problem is but anyway here we have Java EE Eclipse and I'm going to close the welcome. In my case, I don't have Ubuntu sets to show the uh, menu here. It's up here. But I prefer to set the menu here. And that's done in your settings. Go to System Settings. And we'll go to Appearance. And go to Behavior. And show the menus for window in the Windows title bar. Just click here. I'll close that. And then if I do a, 
if I do a restart on this, it'll, well, actually it's shown right here currently. So let's go over here to the icon here, lock it to the launcher so next time I won't have to do that. So I'll go to File, New, Project, and I'll just Java Project. Click Next, and we'll just call this Hello Java World, and just take the default. Click Finish, and I'm going to click Yes as far as the Java perspective. Yes. And let's go to source here. New class. And I'm going to call this simply hello world. And I'm going to click here. I want a public static void main string. Click finish. To the system dot out dot print line hello now I'll put in Luna world I guess instead of Java world add my semicolon there at the end and then I'm going to run this and run it as a Java application and always save resources before launching click OK and so anyway here is the output for that so that's pretty much it for installing Luna in Ubuntu 14.04. Thank you.